Hi everyone, Lynn here for Lindy Stamp Gang and today I want to show you this gorgeous pumpkin that I've made as part of my October project for Lindy's obviously. Um, I kind of started off with a steampunk style and ended up deciding oh I'm really liking the industrial chic style decor that there is nowadays and of course I thought I would feature L'Amour's new set of sprays. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the basics of the pumpkin and then I'll show you how to do these gorgeous, gorgeous leaves. So I bought myself a foam pumpkin. And as well, I also purchased a piece of walnut hollow wood and you can see it has the bark on the outside. So I stained the wood with walnut stain distress stain and then added an acrylic sealer over top. And for the pumpkin, what I did is I purchased a roll of aluminum foil tape. Now, the roll does is bigger than that. I've just used quite a bit of it over time. And it is a sticky back. It does have a peel-off backing on it. So I went ahead and cut my pieces into squares and rectangles and placed them all over my pumpkin. No rhyme or reason to how I did it. I just covered the whole pumpkin. Once I was done with that, I took out some different tools that I have and made little indentations, little lines here and there. I have some that are quite close together and hopefully you can see here some are further apart and larger indentations. I also have some X's that I made that I just drew on. After that, I was looking for something else to add some definition to it and I found some brats in my stash and they're screws is what they are. So I went ahead and took my pokey tool and poked myself a little hole and then using glossy accents I glued the, bl the brads in. Once I was done with the pumpkin I went ahead and, and used some black gesso and you could use black paint as well. Covered the whole thing, let it dry a little bit and then wiped off the, wiped off the excess. Now you'll notice that the black paint is still left in, in the indentations which I love that look. After it was dry, I went ahead and I mixed up some brown paint and some acrylic glazing liquid, mixed it together, <clears throat> excuse me, painted it all over the pumpkin, let it dry, took off the rest. And you can see it here and there, and it does have a beautiful gold shimmer to it. Really gorgeous in real life, really gorgeous. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do the leaves. Not so much the beads, but it's basically the same principle. So I'll get set up and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So here's where we started with the leaves. I purchased two different garlands and of course they're all attached together. So I have the this one here that has the very small leaves on it. I didn't use too many of those, but I did use them. And then I also purchased one that had larger leaves on it. And you can see that it does have like a little bead spray on there. And I did use those. And even though I'm not going to show you how to do it, it's basically the same principle as the leaves. Now this particular garland has the velvet leaves on it. Don't use those. You want to use the other ones. So what I started off by doing is I just pulled the leaves right off the garland. Now you'll notice that this is a plastic backing that's making the veins for you. You want to remove that right off. So it is glued on and you might have to work at it a little bit, but it shouldn't be too difficult to peel right off. And here's your leaf. Once you've removed your leaves from the plastic veining, go ahead and place them face down on your work surface. Now I used gesso, but you can use white acrylic paint. Put a good backing on the back of the leaf. Only on the back, not on the front. That's the most important thing for you to remember. So basically this is what your leaf is going to look like. Okay, so you've done the back side, not the front side. Okay. And you'll see that you can see some white bits here and there, and that's okay. 
and you'll notice that if you're working on your craft mat and you do it all in the same spot that some of your leaves will wind up being wider than others and that's okay too because that'll just add to the variety of leaves that you have so remember don't paint the front paint the back gesso or white acrylic paint once you've done that you want to go ahead and take your mists and spray your leaves now like I mentioned I'm using the industrial chic set and the colors in the set are time travel teal steampunk sepia steel shimmer shabby turbine teal and rusty lantern lime now I went ahead and sprayed my leaves using a variety of the colors on some of them I used two colors on others I used three there was no rhyme or reason to it on some I didn't use much of the teal on others I used only green but you'll notice well first the first thing you should notice is the shimmer from the starburst sprays of course and you'll also notice that where you had gesso your leaves have taken on the sprays and where you didn't it stayed the orange but it's faded it's kind of um, aged I guess is what you want to say what I want to say it's turned it more of a rusty color in the background especially in the veining area you'll notice that and that's what you want that's what's giving you the variation and the variegation of color on your leaves so that's the front back is still gessoed I went ahead and did the back side but I wasn't as particular about the back side on some of them I did use more than two colors on some I only used one but it really doesn't make that much difference unless you plan on hanging on making a project where you're going to hang it and it can see, be seen for both sides you're really mostly concerned with the front side and here's another example of what your leaf looks like so once I was done spraying all my leaves I took out my Versamark em embossing ink and I went ahead and just went just here there on the leaf and just rubbed it on and that's it took out some embossing powders and I did use a couple different colors but this one of the ones I did use and really do like is the Madonna robe blue gold so I went ahead and sprinkled my embossing powder all over my leaf and what you wind up with is a mottled look and that's what you want so I heat set my embossing powder and this is what you get as a result of that now I'm hoping you can see the shimmer and the glimmer from the embossing powder so you have the shimmer from the sprays and you have the shimmer from the embossing powder and it's just gorgeous and especially since the embossing powder being so shiny that it really reflects a lot of light and since it's not all over the leaf it really does add to the variation in your leaf now I really like this look and I wanted to take it a step further and if I'd have had some Lindy's glitter that's what I would have used but I don't so I took out some of the diamond dust that I had in my stash and I took some tacky glue and using my finger I just wiped it on here and there just in a few different places and then dipped my leaf in the diamond dust and you can see now you have even more glimmer hope you can see that so basically the one thing that you two things that you want to remember only paint the back side of your leaf with your gesso or your acrylic paint and buy the cheapest ones that you can get also this works fantastic on cheap flowers if you want to change the color you'll get variations again in them with the different mists and sprays that Lindy's has go ahead and do that so that's my tutorial for today I hope you enjoyed it as always thank you for watching I want you to know that I appreciate that you're leaving comments as well thank you and have a great day bye